Welcome back, Lancers, to this week's remote show. We hope you guys are all doing well and staying healthy. This is a big week for all of us because we have some important decisions to make. Do we go with credit or no credit? Do we take our letter grade? What does this do no harm grading policy mean for us? We'll deal with those topics today, but first a story about what happens each morning in our own Lancer parking lot and who's behind it all. Owen Lockery and Nico Arboit have the story. While millions are losing their jobs around the country in reports of long lines at food banks, instead of sitting at home, a Carlsbad mom wanted to help the families that rely on the free and reduced meal program. Our grocery drive is uh, a Families for Families effort where we have asked each family to bring down one bag of groceries and then we give it to a family that's in need. At first, Tracy had a real hard time helping the families. We got 50 bags the first week, but we had 75 families that needed groceries. But through the district's support, Tracy has had plenty of donations to give to the families. Because we got uh, invited to do a communication through the whole district. And now that's been for two weeks and we've had enough groceries for everyone both weeks. Yet, it is not only the groceries which are helping the families right now. Well, I think the groceries are important, but I also think it's just the idea that it's just families from our schools helping families. They know that we're all in this together and that people care. Not only is the drive great for families in need, but it is great for people in our community looking for a way to help others. Giving everyone in our, in our community an opportunity to help people because everybody feels frustrated right now and they want to be able to find something to do to help. And this is such a way to have an immediate impact. So if you're looking for a way to help during this crisis, bring a bag of groceries down to the high school on Fridays, sometime between 1030 to 1130. This is Owen Lockery alongside photojournalist Nico Arboit reporting for CHS TV. Thank you, Owen and Nico, for that inside scoop. Switching topics, cities like Carlsbad were blindsided by the County of San Diego last Friday when they announced that the beaches could be open this past Monday. That's a problem for our town because the city of Carlsbad doesn't own much of our beaches. In fact, of the eight miles of shoreline in this city, Carlsbad only owns a small one mile stretch. But if our beaches do open up later this week, what are the rules? Holden Cisco takes it from here. Hello everyone watching from home. My name is Holden Cisco, and I'm with CHS TV and I'm here at the beaches to tell you a little bit about the beach closure and uh, what's taking place this Friday. So pretty much in case you did not know, the city is meeting this Friday to decide whether or not to open up the Carlsbad City beaches. Now that only includes about a mile of beach um, from Oak Avenue to the Oceanside border because all the other Carlsbad beaches are currently closed and they are state beaches. So if these, uh, if these city beaches do open up, there are going to be some mandatory regulations. These include uh, half the parking spaces will be closed off to prevent crowds. Not only that, but the bathrooms will be sanitized every two hours to help prevent the spread of COVID. Now, these are both great, but one that we may not like is that the beaches are going to be opening up slowly. So that means more people going to one beach and... Uh, that leads into my next point is that social distancing is going to be a must. You have to wear a mask now if you're within six feet of another person. That is going to be mandatory starting May 1st, so be sure to wear your masks. Now, on the beaches, once they open up, um, you'll be able to walk, run, jog um, on the beach. There are going to be no gatherings on the beach, and then I know a lot of people are going to be happy about this, including myself surfing and swimming and paddleboarding are all going to be allowed as well. Just make sure that you are social distancing, wearing a mask and following the regulations. Another thing the county is mandating is that there has to be a city of Carlsbad staff person monitoring the beaches. So I don't know if uh, you've seen, but a lot of lifeguards have been going by and they're just making sure that everyone's staying off the beaches. And a few people have been on the beaches, you know, sneaking on, but they're just getting kicked right off. So um, Carlsbad, just be sure to follow these regulations. Like we, we all wanna be on the beaches, so just don't ruin it for everyone. And um, you know, once these, are, once these uh, tapes are gone, this beach will be open right now. I'm currently in the village. So just be sure you're going to a Carlsbad beach that is open and you are following the mandatory regulations. Thank you, Carlsbad, that's all I have for you. Stay safe, stay healthy, and now I'm going to send it back to the anchors. Thank you, Holden. Now it's a huge dilemma during quarantine. How do you get a haircut? Do you risk letting a family member do it for you, or do you give yourself a haircut? Let's join one Carlsbad family to see how they're dealing with this pretty important dilemma. Alright, I'm getting kind of nervous for this. What if the haircut turns out to be bad, you know? What could go wrong, right? 
Oh no, looks like I'm getting a ball cut. Whoa there, that razor is a little close to my ear. I don't want to lose any parts today. My poor hair, all of it's gone. Phew, all done now. That wasn't so bad, was it? Thank you, Parker, for your bravery. Okay, so we have two choices for the way we'll be graded for the rest of this year. We can stick with the regular letter grade or we can take credit or no credit. Now, which option is better for you? Let's talk to senior Michael Cruz and Dr. Brockett for a little bit of guidance. Good morning, Carlsbad. I'm Michael Cruz and my mom is a school teacher at Jefferson Elementary. And so she has been very up to date with the policies and the rules that we've had to follow since we've been on quarantine and what we're gonna continue to follow as quarantine continues. And so what has been brought up is the discussion on whether or not a student should take the credit or no credit route or the letter grade route. And she explained this to me depending on the type of student that you are. So for me, I'm a senior. And for me, I'm going to take the credit or no credit route simply because I would like to turn in an assignment and not have to worry about an A, a B, a C or a D. I'd rather just receive credit or return and be able to graduate high school. However, for freshman, sophomore, junior or, or senior for that matter, if you enjoyed your GPA as of March 13th and you wanna pursue that, then I would take the letter grade route. And if you'd like colleges to see the GPA that you had worked so hard to get as of March 13th, I would take the letter grade route. However, it also depends on the type of student that you are once again. So if you know that you're a hardworking student and you're willing to put in the work and do your assignments as well as possible, not that you shouldn't if you're taking the credit or no credit route, but if you're willing to do that and receive the pressure in return, then I would take the letter, the letter grade route simply because you know that you're going to do well. However, for me personally, I'd like to take not the easy route, but I'd like to make things easier on my teachers and easier on myself because I know that as a public school student, it's hard with so much free time to dedicate myself to the normal hours of the school day now that I'm at home. Either way, I think it's going to be beneficial for the teachers if you're putting in enough work to pursue your letter grade or if you're going to take the credit or no credit route. But either way, you have to base it on what type of student you are and what your grades were as of March 13th. Hey, Michael. Uh, thanks for uh, including me on this and for sharing your thoughts there. I, I really think you're, you're right on in that it's, a, it's a, an individual student-by-student student decision. Um, I, I think it's, it's, uh, there's not a right or a wrong answer to this question for anyone. And in addition to the things that you mentioned, I think it you know, depends on what a student has going on right now and, and how this uh, pandemic may be affecting them or their families uh, directly as well. So um, I know it's not an easy decision, but I'm confident that we're all going to come out okay on the other side of this. Hey, Lancer Nation, it's Mrs. Howard and... We just wanted to say hi and that we miss everybody. We wanted to give a special shout out to my students with last names M-I-L through R-O-D as well as Avid and E-L-D. I miss seeing you guys on campus, but it's really nice connecting via email, phone, and Google Meets. I also wanted to share that May is Mental Health Awareness Month and that the CHS School Counseling Department is going to be collaborating with counselors across the district to publish content for our students through Google Classroom, Instagram, and Twitter. With that being said, most of you are probably on a device right now and we wanted to put a challenge out to you guys. So after watching CHS TV, you guys can log into Instagram and follow us at CBAD Counseling. We want to see if we can get 500 followers by Friday. That's tomorrow. So please log in and follow us. And once you're following us, you'll also see our posts for Mental Health Awareness Month, as well as important updates, information, and fun challenges. We miss you so much. Stay healthy, stay strong, seize up. Bye, everybody. Hey, CHSS. Hope you guys are all doing well thinking of you and hope you're staying safe and healthy. I miss you guys so much and I'm feeling kind of blue. Due to this, I'd like to do a shout out to Mrs. Harris and I challenge you to the hair dye challenge. Keep going with those reindeer games. Thanks a lot. Hello CHS, a big shout out to all staff and students. I miss you guys in my backyard right now. I did get a video from Mrs. Lambert with a hair dye challenge. 
And to that I say, challenge accepted. What's the worst that could happen? Stay tuned and find out next week. The state of California's do no harm policy means that the final grades we receive in our classes can be no lower than the grade we earned as of March 13th when our campuses were shut down. How does that reality square with who you are as a person and the goals you've set for yourselves? What does it mean to be a proud Lancer, striving for excellence and pushing ourselves to be the best that we can be, never taking the easy way out and having some self-respect? We asked some recent CHS grads to weigh in. Make decisions that reflect your good character. You shouldn't ever do the bare minimum. To achieve success, you can't look for loopholes. Successful people get the work done. They don't look for ways to cheat the system. Show your Lancer pride and make decisions Carlsbad will be proud of. Make decisions that you won't look back on regret, ones that reflect the best version of you. Thank you to the CHS alumni who gave us their response. Switching topics, some of you might be wondering what happens to all of the animals in the shelters during this unusual time. You might be surprised at the amazing silver lining here for the creatures large and small. Auburn Tompkinson has the answer. Good morning Carlsbad, my name is Auburn Tompkinson and I'm here on my homemade magic window to give you some updates about life during COVID-19. One place that has been positively affected by this virus is animal shelters. Due to the stay at home order, more and more people are adopting animals of their own and some shelters have been completely empty since their opening. The benefits of having a pet at home are well known, but could there be a downfall to this adopting surge? Shelters are worried that when people return to work after the virus has passed through, they won't have enough time to care for their pets anymore and will have to send them back to the animal shelter. This would not be very good as the animals had a chance at freedom and now are stuck right back where they started. There are two ways that I think we can fix this problem, and one is either finding a way to combine work and caring for your pet, and another is adopting animals after the coronavirus has passed. Thank you so much for watching, and now I'm going to send it back to the anchors. Thanks, Auburn. Since we all have a lot of time on our hands now, why not try something new? We have Layla and Emery in the kitchen to show us how to bake some lava cake. Hello Lancers, so the first step to baking these is to preheat your oven to 425 degrees. Then you microwave half a cup of butter and half a cup of chocolate together and fully mix that up. After that you add one cup of powdered sugar and mix that. Then crack two whole eggs into the mix and then divide two eggs and only put the yolk into the mix. After that, you're going to put in 6 tablespoons of flour and mix that all up. After that, get some little bowls, grease them up, and divide your batter evenly. Then throw them in the oven for 12 minutes. And once they're fully cooked on the outside but soft on the inside, they're ready to come out. I recommend eating these with vanilla ice cream. Enjoy Lancers and stay safe. Thanks, Layla. It's important that all of us are taking care of ourselves during this time, and your counselors are always on standby if you wish to talk to them. Speaking of counselors, since May's Mental Health Awareness Month, they'll be sending you messages in the coming weeks promoting self-care, mindfulness, and connectedness. Be sure to message us on social media at CHSTV Worldwide if you have any story ideas or suggestions. Now we're going to end off the show with a creative edit from sophomore cinematographer Aiden Mooney. We'll see everyone next Thursday. Bye.